previously discussing on the page 134, 134 of the USMLE step 1 2021 now we are on page 135 we have previously seen that we have classified this bacteria on the basis of gram positive bacteria this is the gram positive um, bacteria on the basis of this cocci mainly we have came to know and the, that has been divided by this catalyst test into the group of two organisms one is staphylococcus another is streptococcus now in, in staphylococcus we have talked about the staphylococcus aureus epidermis saprophyticus then in the streptococcus we are talking about the alpha hemolytic beta hemolytic and gamma hemolytic similarly we will now will deal with the uh, organisms respectively so now talking about the alpha hemolysis we previously we have talked that the rbc is the incomplete lysis of the rbc rbc has there is an incomplete lysis this is partial oxidation of the hemoglobin so these are the gram positive cocci alpha hemolytic that are causes the partial oxidation of the hemoglobin causes greenish or brownish color without clearing around the around the growth on the blood agar so if you are seeing this blood agar then there is no clearing although the where the bacteria has been grown there you can find this there is like this is the clear zone so this is the beta hemolytic complete hemolysis has been occurred but in case of here if you see there is no complete hemolysis no clearing of the uh, background and there is a greenish or brownish color which is indicate that there is the partial hemolysis of the rbc there is a partial oxidation of the rbc because of that there is a green or brownish in color this indicates alpha hemolytic any meaning partial hemolysis now <clears throat> what are the organisms that are responsible these are usually on the blood agar so we are talking about the hemolysis of the rbc means we are talking about the blood agar including the following organism that is the we have known that alpha hemolytic you can remember from this chart actually we have talked about the partial hemolysis and there were the two group of organisms streptococcus pneumonia and viridens group of streptococci so we are talking the same and among them we can differentiate by optogen sensitivity and blood solubility test similar information same information is over here there is the streptococcus pneumonia and viridens streptococci the both are catalyst negative so they give belongs to the streptococcus group but when they are going to test this optogen sensitivity streptococcus pneumonia was optogen and biosolubility that is sensitive whereas viridens streptococci were optogen resistant and in by which we can differentiate this streptococcus pneumonia from viridens of the streptococci the streptococcus pneumonia is responsible for mainly pneumonia there are other infection like meningitis sinusitis otitis media we'll talk about that then streptococcus viridens is actually responsible for infective endocarditis mainly now talking about the we have come to know about the alpha hemolytic bacteria it means partial hemolysis of the rbc there is a complete hemolysis of the rbc which is known as the beta hemolytic bacteria and the beta hemolytic bacteria are also the gram positive bacteria that causes the complete lysis of the rbc you can see this is since that there is a clearing of the rbc you can see this is the blood agar this is the rbc containing agar but here the rbc has been totally cleared why it has been clear because the rbc has been complete lysed why it isn't be lysed because of this uh, organism that has been grown this you can see you are seeing only the clearing zone but there are the organism in the middle in this clear zone here this is the organism okay this is the organism this this whole organism is there so you have to understand this is the organism you can even uh, you can see over there this these are the growth of the organism and that has been clear or surrounding all the clearance where they here there was the organism is grown but it has not cleared the background the rbc is partially only hemolyzed but here total rbc is cleared and this is the bacterial this is the bacterial colony growth and around which all the things has been cleared so what are the what we are talking about we are talking about the gram positive cocci that causes the complete lysis of the rbc this is the pale or clear area surrounding colony and the blood agar organism uh, include the following organism that is the staphylococcus aureus mainly streptococcus pyogen and streptococcus agalaxy if you if you see the previous uh, uh, if you can see over here we have talked about the complete hemolysis and two organism we are talking that is the streptococcus uh, pyogen and streptococcus agalaxy and, and among them them we can differentiate by this basic racine sensitivity test similar same information is over there this is the gram positive cocci catalyst negative on streptococcus group streptococcus group there is the complete hemolysis that falls in the beta hemolytic group that is the streptococcus agalaxy and streptococcus pyogenes and that can be differentiated by the basic test 
so we were discussing okay so this is the uh, gram positive okay complete lysis of the rbc pale clear area surrounding the colony and the blood agar and include the following organism that is the staphylococcus aureus streptococcus pyogenes and streptococcus galaxy which have discussed previously in the streptococcus group and they both can be different both are catalase negative because they both are streptococcus and they can be differentiated by the bacitracin one is bacitracin sensitive that is streptococcus pyogenes whereas the bacitracin resistance is streptococcus galaxy simply so the same information over there additional information information is here is about staphylococcus aureus this was gram positive catalase positive catalase positive and also coagulase positive so it belongs to the staphylococcus aureus and staphylococcus aureus like other beta hemolytic bacteria they can clear that they cause the complete hemolysis of the rbc so there is a clear zone on the blood agar in case of the staphylococcus aureus as well so that is an additional information than the previous now we are when we are talking about the staphylococcus aureus staphylococcus aureus is a very important bacteria actually this is the bacteria in in your own life in your medical life in your everything in every point of uh, care you will find this box this will be challenging every time with you because there will be tons of infection that have to deal in your life as a medical career by this staphylococcus aureus bacteria so this is the nasty bug actually okay so let's uh, talk in detail about it this is the gram positive we know that it is a beta hemolytic we have also known that that is catalase positive previous information and that's coagulase positive that also we know that and cocaine cluster so the information and these are the vital information actually so they are gram positive beta hemolytic catalase positive coagulase positive cocaine cluster so do you have sir the information we have talked in previous lecture as well other information like protein a virulence factor binds with the fc region of the immunoglobin a inhibit the complement activation and phagocytosis commonly colonize the nears ear axilla and groin so the important point over here is that these are the protein a they contain this staphylococcus aureus contain the protein a that has the virulence factor it acts as a virulence factor because this inhibits this binds to the fc portion of the immunoglobin g and inhibit the complement activation and phagocytosis so if you remember immunoglobin g has a function we'll talk in the immunology in detail that it has helps in the activation of the complement pathway as well as it's increased the optionization if you, since this has contains this protein a they are actually inhibiting this complement activation and phagocytosis which means it is inhibiting your immune system to kill this staphylococcus aureus and you easily human people human body easily get infected with staphylococcus aureus because it has this virulence factors protein a so these are the gram positive cocaine cluster you can have to remember it sometime they could in usml section they will only just give you a picture by which you have to understand okay we know that this is a blue color this is a purple color this is a violet color so it is a gram positive coca since it is in a cluster okay this is the staphylococcus group so it is staph aureus now they will give you information it is catalase positive coagulase positive you know it is staphylococcus aureus if it is they are giving information like catalase positive but coagulase negative then you have to think about staphylococcus epidermidis and saprophyticus and then in among that you can do this <coughs> another test and we can identify that which which one is what by no wise in test and no wise in sensitive then it is that is staphylococcus epidermidis if you register in staphylococcus saprophyticus so you have to understand this picture as well this picture is very important as well i'll i'll give you a, a one uh, complete understanding so that you can understand over this this is the gram positive bacteria this is the gram positive bacteria that is in a beta hemolytic but it in it is in a cluster form that you have understood okay this is violet color we have to very much careful at that about that now the, about virulence factor we have not this has the got additional one thing that we need to remember that is it has the protein a so this protein a is as a function that it inhibit the binding it binds to the fc portion of the immunoglobin g you have the y portion and uh, the, if you see the y portion if you see the y portion then then in the fc portion the downward is called the fc portion and upward is called the fav portion in fc portion it binds to there and inhibit the complement activation and phagocytosis commonly colonized these are the commonly found in our own our body and normally in the nares then into the ear into the axilla into the groin so normally this bacteria is present inside our body they are easily found in our body so they are present in the nares 
your ear, your axilla, and your groin. So these are the normal flora of your body. They can colonize easily over there, and they can be transmitted to other as well, and they can cause infection to your own body as well. They can cause disease like inflammatory disease, and there is the like skin infection, organ abscess, pneumonia only after virus infection, mainly influenza infection. This staphylococcus is mm, causing pneumonia, endocarditis, septic arthritis, and osteomyelitis. So there are the some disease like it causes inflammatory disease. Some are due to its toxin, that is toxin mediated disease. Like it has a toxin like toxic shock syndrome, toxin, scalded skin syndrome, that is due to exploitative toxin and rapid onset of food poison due to enterotoxin. So it has the three major toxin, that is toxin mediated disease, you know, toxic shock syndrome toxic, which is an super antigen that causes the toxic shock syndrome to the patient. They can also cause the scalded skin syndrome due to this exfoliative toxin and then is there is a rapid onset for visiting due to it enterotoxin the toxin of the staphylococcus aureus so it can cause inflammatory disease it can cause the disease due to its toxin and there are that you have to remember very carefully then there is the term like mrsa and that is the methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus it is an important cause of serious nosocomial and community acquired infection resistant is due to alter in the penicillin binding protein that confer refer by the mechazine sometime some strains release phantom valentine leukocidin which kills leukocide and cause tissue necrosis so there is two information over here one that MRSA. MRSA is known as the methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus. This methicillin is a group of organism. This is called semi-synthetic penicillin. They are like oxacillin, cloxacillin, dicloxacillin, flucloxacillin, methicillin. Methicillin usually cause uh, tubular necrosis. They cause eosinophilic nephritis. So that drug has been withdrawn from the market, but still the name is persist. It MRSA means methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus it means that this staphylococcus aureus is resistant to methicillin oxacillin cloxacillin flucloxacillin this groups of drug and since this is resistant why it has been resistant because it is has altered the penicillin binding protein when we will talk about the, this antibiotics then we will deal about this penicillin and among that we can i will explain how this penicillin this all this bacteria had got developed resistant here you have to understood that this mrsa is a term that has given to the staph aureus that are resistant to the certain antibiotics that group of antibiotic is methicillin resistant and staphylococcus aureus and that actually is due to alteration in the penicillin binding protein this is inform this is very much important information and that is usually coded in the gene by called mechazine so if they are talking about the staph aureus you have to understand if they are if they are talking about the mrsa then you have to understand okay it, the mrsa is due to alter in the penicillin binding protein and that is that is because it has been encoded in the mechazine this information they will manipulate to give you a question about mrsa they also there is some other information like some strain release phantom valentine leukocidin this is the pbl that is usually present in the community acquired mrsa and which kills the leukocyte and causes tissue necrosis so this is the PBL that is the phantom valentine leukocidin is a component is a that has released by the community of MRSA and that cause kills the leukocytosis leukocytes and cause tissue necrosis in our body when we are talking about the this TSSI that is the toxic shock syndrome toxin that is a super antigen that bind to the MSC class 2 anti cell receptor result in the polyclonal T cell activation and cytokine release. I have been, uh, previously explained you very clearly about in the super anti antigen section if you go to the uh, previous uh, lecture where you have we have talked about the super antigen and you can see over there super antigen causing shock there is the staphylococcus aureus that causes the toxic shock syndrome toxin and that causes the bind to the, the MSC MSC class 2 and T cell receptor outside the group and then they activate the normally there is 1% activation of T cell but super antigen this toxic oxygen drop toxin causes 20% more activation more than 20% activation of T cell resulting in the tons of cytokines inside your body that damaging your own body and resulting in the fever rash shock and other fever rash and shock that you have to understand so 
we are talking about the staphylococcus aureus the staphylococcal toxic shock syndrome toxin this leads to the fever vomiting diarrhea rash disquamation dis 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 salt in organ failure tss release in in cause the increase in est that is the liver enzyme alt bilirubin these are the symptoms associated with the prolonged use of the vaginal temple uh, tampons or nasal packing um, now why this toxic shock syndrome is developed you have to understand if we go to the previous days there were the females we are used used to use to use this normal cloth that is a vaginal tampoon for controlling the menstrual cycle in that case if there is a staphylococcus aureus infection this staphylococcus bacteria grow and they, they release this t toxic shock syndrome toxin tss t1 and that toxin get absorbed inside the body and if toxin goes inside your body then toxin activate has act as a super antigen activate the tons of t cell they cause there is a cytochrome the cytokine is strong inside your body and develop this toxic shock syndrome toxin toxic shock syndrome due to developing the feature like fever vomiting diarrhea rash disorder shock and inorganic failure okay now there is this is also common in the nasal packing if you have a nasal surgery nasal infection nasal bleeding we do a nasal packing in that way this staphylococcus is already colonized is already present in many people in the nares in the nose so if you are doing nasal packing this bacteria gets there is a stasis the bacteria gets chance to proliferate they goes chance to multiply they develop the toxin and this toxin get absorbed and then once the toxin get absorbed then again there it acts a super antigen and then causing us infection so we have came to know about the toxic shock syndrome but these are now real real these days due to development of the this uh, menstrual tampon use menstrual pad and then there is also uh, medicated antibiotic mediated nasal packing so that has been reduced but this can be a question to you because a patient has a nasal surgery there is a nasal packing and they, de they develop the fever rash shock you have to understood they are talking about the toxic shock syndrome due to the toxic shock syndrome toxin okay now compared with the streptococcus pyogenes tss a toxic shock like syndrome associated with the painful skin infection there is the another term that like with the streptococcus also has a we have come talk previously that is has the super antigen which is tss toxic shock syndrome like this is a toxic like a toxic shock syndrome associated with the painful skin infection that is there so there is a painful and painless skin the by which we can differentiate both toxic shock syndrome stuff or is food poisoning due to ingestion of the preformed toxin short incubation period two to six hours followed by a non bloody diarrhea animosis so that is important actually because when you are talking about the another toxin that is the enterotoxin we are talking about the enterotoxin this enterotoxin is a preformed toxin if there is a food you have reheated and the food has got the bacteria has been colonized already there and that has released the toxin if you are heating also the bacteria get killed but the toxin is stable so it is enterotoxin is the heat stable toxin so once it is stable if you ingest that food that goes into the intestine and then you activate your they irritate your enteric nervous system then and then there will be the uh, intense and immediate diarrhea and vomiting but it is self resolving because you have there is only toxin is there the toxin will be limited amount if there is a large amount then there can be dangerous but if it is small amount that will be just one or two or three episode or one day or two day diarrhea and it will resolve by own when the toxin goes away so staff food poisoning is ingestion of preformed toxin short incubation period two to six hours followed by non bloody diarrhea and emesis enterotoxin is heat stable and not destroyed by cooking Staph aureus makes coagulase and toxins from fibrin clone itself and abscess. Now there is another term like abscesses. Whenever you see any abscesses, mainly like boil, abscess, carbuncle, furuncle, this staph aureus is a nasty bug. This is mainly a responsible bug. What happened? This bug has an enzyme called coagulase and toxin. So this, by the help of this, they easily form a fibrin boundary. So if you see our abscess, there has a clear boundary due to this coagulase enzyme that has formed a fibrin boundary or coagulate and 